You're listening to the All Systems Go podcast, the show that teaches you everything you need to know to put your business on autopilot. Learn how to deploy automated marketing and sales systems in your business the right way with your host, the professor of automation himself and founder of Automation Bridge, Chris Davis. Welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, the founder of Automation Bridge, an online publication for small business automation, where we focus on turning digital marketing professionals into automation service providers. And in this episode, I want to I want to get a bit more tactical uh, than the previous episodes. Uh, we're we're going to roll up our our sleeves and, and, and get down and dirty here. And what I want to do is discuss what I call some of the automation building commandments. OK, these are the ABCs of building automations of I should say of marketing automation. And what what they do is uh, adhered properly adhered. They're going to strengthen the automations that you're building right now and will be these these are, uh, you know, commandments that that should not be ignored or broken. And and definitely uh, so if you want a long standing career as a as a marketing automation professional. So before we get into it, if you are new to the podcast, let me say welcome. You know, I, I, I haven't been welcoming you properly. Uh, thank you for choosing the All Systems Go podcast. Uh, what I want you to do is listen to this episode in its entirety. And in the end, if you if you received value, please make sure you leave a five star rating and review um, as Dana Phil has done. That's the username. Um, and they say process is the bloodline of the service. And sh- and, and they say this this uh, five star rating review and review says get so much out of this. You are a joy to listen to. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you, Dana Phil, uh, for that five star rating and review. And I want to invite you who have been listening to this podcast and have not left a five star rating and review to do so now. Um, help to establish this podcast as the bona fide small business marketing automation podcast that it is. Apple podcast doesn't know how great the 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 content is. Um, so the way that we train them is to leave a five star rating and review. So I appreciate that in advance. And if you haven't subscribed, the All Systems Go podcast is available in App, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can subscribe on YouTube for every new episode. Um, so, again, your five star ratings and reviews are greatly appreciated. So on to the topic of today, the, the commandments. Um let me just start by saying it's it's all about fundamentals. OK, as a as a sports fan, uh, I am enjoying the bubble action uh, in the NBA right now. And you can always tell when the game is on the line. It's not the fancy, you know, behind the back and through the legs. It's the fundamentals that are going to bring you home. Or send you home, <laughs> bring you home as the champion or send you home as the loser. You know, things as simple as uh, rebounds, uh, free throws. Right. Um, these fundamentals, uh, though, they seem boring at the time uh, when when the the heat is on and the pressure is up um, executed consistently and you will find yourself in the champion's position. So let me let me preface this entire episode by say, listen, building automations isn't easy. It's, it's not an easy task, especially if you want to do it the right way. And I've witnessed some of the most atrocious automations uh, ever. I don't, I don't think you can see anything. You know what? I haven't seen the worst. But when I was the director of education at Active Campaign, I saw a whole lot. And it was bad, everybody. Um, I will say the migration team there, <laughs> Rayhan, Brandon, uh, everyone else, uh, Kobe, uh, they and whoever else is on the team now, uh, they have seen much worse. I mean, there are times where I would walk by and look at their screen and I would just be scratching my head, looking at the monitor sideways and, and just trying to figure out what were they trying to accomplish? 
you know, not in a, you know, like you're so dumb type of way, but truly trying to figure out, I see how you built that. What were you thinking that was going to (laughs) do? Right. Like sometimes I just like to be able to ask them with this spider web, which which path did you think they were going to go down? And how are you going to determine how they went down that path? Right. Um, so I've seen a lot and and even beyond uh, my time at active campaign prior to um, just as a as a consultant, as a, you know, at lead pages, uh, seeing a whole bunch of infusion soft campaigns. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I've just seen it all. And whether it's Entreport, Drip, uh, I've, I've even seen people make ConvertKit look ugly and, and, and ConvertKit's pretty, you know, their builder is pretty straightforward. So across the board and, and I get it to be fair. Let me say this. Everybody isn't built to build. OK, I've discussed this uh, in the podcast when we talk about assessing technology, how everybody should not be picking out technology for their business. Um, everybody's not built to build. So there are just certain people certain types of brains, certain types of personalities um, that should never build an automation. Just I'll just level with you. And there is a good chance you listening to this right now. I I could be talking to and about you. You know, this may be your this. This may be your release. Let yourself off the hook (laughs) and acknowledge, you know what? Let me get somebody that understands this stuff. But but why is that? Why is it so hard? And, and and why do so many people struggle with it? Because you don't know that you're not built to build. You don't you don't see these hurdles and roadblocks. You just see an opportunity. And, and as an entrepreneur, that's that's your mode of, of operation. Look, let's get it done. But but let me just break down a few reasons that come to mind why building is so hard and it should be approached more carefully, honestly. Um, and the first is it's highly technical. And what I mean is the tools, e- even at their most basic form, still require a level of acumen that escapes most entrepreneurs. And I'm serious. If you struggle with understanding, you know, how the how the cloud works and sinks and, you know, um, even emails sometimes with attachments and understanding how to send a a large file, you know, to upload that, get the link from drive and use that link instead of uploading the file itself. You know, like some of the basics, you're going to really struggle. (laughs) You're going to really struggle with, with any type of email marketing or marketing automation platform. You know, if you find yourself on your computer and, and some of you may not know it's you, but, you know, simple shortcuts like command C and command V to copy and paste. If you're always going to edit, hitting copy and then edit, hit and paste. Right. If you're typing in on Google and you don't you never look and see that they've pre-populated what you're typing and you're literally just pecking away, typing in the entire string. These are signs that you should not be a builder of automation because it's just telling to the the level that you understand technology. Right. If if <laughs> let me let me stop, because it it may it may sound like I'm, I'm beating you down, but I just wanted to I want to give you uh, when I say basic form of technology, I'm talking about the technology that's afforded to all of us freely when we when we download or purchase any device. OK, so, again, if you already struggle with the basic technologies, the chances you'll struggle with email marketing or a marketing automation platform are greater than ever. OK, so that's the first reason. The second is it's logical there. Listen, there are certain brains that understand logic and certain types that never will. I'm one of those brains. I'm an engineer. Um, if you're a numbers person, there's a chance that you understand logic. If you're a, a, a science, math and science major, there's a chance that you understand science. There's just certain brains and, and professions that understand or and or, you know, exclusive or mutually exclusive ands, you know, like all of this stuff is very technical. OK. And as a professional engineer and expert 
in this marketing automa- automation space, even I get confused with some of the branching logic and and when to use an and function or an or operator. It can be extremely technical. I mean, this is nerdy stuff, everybody. OK, and this is all that's going on when someone says email your list. That's what they say. But look at all of this other stuff, the, the technicality of the tool, understanding logic, if this, then that and this or that. <laughs> just those first two reasons are enough for anybody to just tap out and say, you know what? I'm just going to use BCC in Gmail. That way I can just send it to everybody and I'm on to the next thing. Right. And again, this is just to do it. If if I put the next expectation of doing it the right way. Oh, it's even it's it's even if it's, it's even harder. Right. I mean, again, let yourself off the hook right now. OK, breathe. I need you know what? I need the the CEOs who have taken this on and have been overwhelmed and just the non techie people. You've done the best you could do for your business. Can, can I say that to you? You have fought the good fight. Breathe. This was never your battle to win. You never had the tools. You don't know how to swing this sword. But there are people that do. Let them do the fighting for you on the technical field, on the technical battlefield. OK. It's time to stop beating yourself up. Stop trying to do this because even your best is is not. Your best is equivalent to the best's worst. <laughs> right. So on my worst day, it's probably what you can produce on your best day. And I'm not saying that to demean you. I'm just saying I'm saying that to free you. OK, it may be time where you unashamedly say, you know what? I need to get somebody to do this for me. All right. And third is most people underestimate the weight of the two reasons I just (laughs) stated and they jump right in to get something built real quick. Okay, this is that follow the leader mentality, right? They see someone else what someone else has done and they just want that result. No strategy, no mapping, just straight ignorant implementation. Let me get let me. uh, Oh, I need to send. I I just attended this um, virtual event and they were talking about email marketing and how everybody should be sending at least three emails every time someone opts in. And um, how can we do that? Oh, MailChimp's free. Let me do that. Uh, Write some emails, put them in there. Good. Done. No, no. You may have checked the box. Yes. Is that going to work? No. And, and what I mean is, will it work is will it produce the result that you're thinking? Will that little haphazard three email follow up sequence that you just put in place do what in your head you're thinking it's going to do? Because you're thinking people are going to receive those emails and start buying your stuff. They're going to open and reply and you're going to get all this engagement that 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 said guru said that you would get. It's not going to happen. I'm just going to be honest with you. OK, and then when it doesn't happen, you say, oh, I need to do more. Oh, let's let's send another email. Let's do this. And before you know it, your email marketing or marketing automation platform makes no sense. You can't even figure out what you're doing. And every time you log in, the second you hit enter. No, you know what? It starts before you even hit enter. Just the thought of logging in is overwhelming. You're just like, uh, as you're typing in MailChimp, you're just like M I A I ouch L C ouch, (laughs) right? Like it's a painful experience. Okay. And I've been speaking from like the CEO, the non technical CEO perspective, but if you're an upcoming digital marketer, you're, you're going about this stuff blindly. You may not have the pain. Oh, I love logging in. Let me let me jump into Drip. Let me jump into Entreport over here and Infusionsoft. You're all over the place. And because the CEO doesn't know what bad looks like, you're getting off the hook. But you know it. You know the reckoning is coming. You know you don't know what you're doing. And there are times at night you go to sleep and you can't rest because perhaps there was an email sent or someone else brought onto the team that can expose your faulty behavior. And all I'm saying is let's operate in truth. 
Let's let's get free, everybody. You know, I, I didn't anticipate this to be like a freeing podcast, but it's kind of the <laughs> the direction we're going here. Everybody just needs to operate freely. No more imposter syndrome as as a, a automated marketing specialist. Own up to it. Listen, I don't know what I, you, you don't tell that to the client. Now you, you're in too deep. <laughs> you can't go to your class. Hey, look, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I got to tap out. Right. You need community. You need resources. You need the rest of this podcast, honestly. So with that being said, let me get into it because uh, I can stay there for a while. I know I just know the pains on both sides. I was that aspiring marketer. Right. I've seen most of my friends are the CEOs. I know these struggles. So let me just say you don't have to you don't have to be the one doing this technical stuff in your business and you can find somebody that truly knows what they're doing. So what I want you to do is start to use this, the rest of this podcast as a, um, for the CEOs out there as a parameter of how to start to measure your marketing, your, your marketer. Right. And if you're the, the, the digital marketing professional, um, these are going to be guidelines. This is your blueprint. This is your blueprint to to get better, like immediately. OK. And and to be successful at marketing automation as a professional, you have to acknowledge these reasons and be able to master them consistently. Abide by the commandments I'm about to give you, because you have to be aware of the pitfalls that await you as you map out and build more automations for your client and yourself. It takes hours of practice. And implementation years, I should say, not hours, years to get this stuff right. And it differs per platform. What you mastered, you know, you may have mastered the intricacies of one platform and have all of your processes mapped out and everything. But another platform requires you to do it in in an entirely different way. And here you are back at square one. And this is why the tips I'm sharing today, they're going to help you regardless of the platform you're using. These are their timeless tips to guide you in your career, to ensure that you don't fall victim to mediocre marketing automation that if if anything to identify what we want to stay away from as uh, automation service providers and, and automation service providers are the the top tier marketing professionals out there who specialize in delivering the service of automation at an excellent level right our our kryptonite <laughs> You know, the thing that uh, we do not want to be attached with in in any means is mediocre marketing. At all. okay? so uh, you ready to jump into it? Let's do it. And oh, oh, before before I get into it, let me reiterate. These will be technical tips, not theoretical. These are not high and lofty. Hey, you could do you should do. Think about this. No, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty here and I'm going to. Uh, the, these commandments are going to apply to all platforms. So this is going to help facilitate a collective understanding. They are not limited to one any platform. OK. And, and the last thing is uh, the these commandments assume that you've already documented your strategy, mapped it out and are truly in a position ready to build. All right. So let's start with the first one. And that is never use negative logic with yes, no branching. I this is this right here. Um, This is the most committed sin. And the reason being is because and and what this tells me is if you're committing this sin, you don't truly understand logic, which is okay, which is okay, All right. Because you're learning now. Um, But it's one of the things where if somebody asks me, hey, can you look at what I've built and tell me if it's going to work? And I see this. I don't even look at the rest of the automation. I close out my browser, fire up my email and say, nope, this is not going to work. It's unacceptable. OK. And and again, if you're if you desire, if you desire to be an automation service provider, you can't commit this one. Absolutely not. And here's what it is um, in, in every marketing automation platform. They have conditions. And when you put the conditions in the in the workflow campaign or automation builder, it get, it automatically gives you a yes or no path. Right. So there's a statement that ex- that needs to be executed to send them down that yes and no path. So let's use tags for for an example. We'll use the customer tag. Let's say uh, you can now you, you can use this statement to say has a customer tag or does not have a customer tag. 
If you say does not have a customer tag and yes or no branching, that is using negative logic. That's the negative logic I'm talking about. Right. Because watch this. If I say does not have the customer tag and they go down the no path, that means no, you do not have the customer tag, which means, yes, you have it. If I have no, if the if I have does not have the customer tag and they go down, yes, I'm saying, yes, you don't have it. Do you see how confusing that is? Now, my yes and no has been inverted because of the use of negative logic. Somebody's head just got hurt right there. Somebody was like, huh? Well, what? Say that again. And whoever has committed this is like, oh, <laughs> right. So you always want to use an affirmative statement in your branching in your branching condition for yes. And in your condition for yes and no branching. So your yes is a true yes. And your no is a true you, a, a no is a true no. So take that same example. And say. Has customer tag. Yes means yes, you have it. No means no, you don't have it. Simple, right? But here's why this is this mistake. This mistake gets made because this is only for yes and no branching logic within automation and campaign builders. Not when creating segments or groups of contacts, when you're actually creating a segment, you can use negative logic, say they don't have this tag. You know, does not have this tag, has this, has visited this Web page and not this one. So what I what I found is that people take that same approach from building segments and just blindly do it in the automation builders. When you can't, because the branching logic already gives you a yes and no path. So when you say does not have and they go down the no path, you're saying yes. (laughs) <laughs> Again, you've inverted your your yes and your no. So some of you, this has been plaguing you. It's like, oh, my gosh, how, do, how does it keep? How do I keep messing up? Or it works when you initially build it. And then when you come back to it, you're confused. Because it literally takes a different level of 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 thought, a higher level of thought to untangle saying no to no means yes and saying no to yes means no. Okay. Hey, I warned you all this was going to get technical. So if you're if you're your head is spinning a little bit right now, I I preface this with my warning for for all my uh, aspiring uh, automation service providers. You're following along. You know it. You know what you've done. And, and, And those of you who haven't and always use affirmative statements. High five. Virtual high five. You got it. All right. All right. So that's number one. Number two isn't necessarily um, you you I won't close my browser on you for this one but you should you should be mindful of this this is something that you should have in your tool bait and it's specifying your timing um, linear versus dynamic so what I mean here is you have to be intentional when you're forcing linear progression and when someone needs to dynamically flow through your process linear progression means they don't get to step two unless they've completed step one They don't get to step four unless they fully completed step one, two and three. Dynamically means they can. It's almost like choose your own adventure, right? Like whenever you're ready to go, go. Okay, and I rarely and and this is really this is the difference between using a wait, a wait. Action, a wait until in a goal condition. Those are like the three timing conditions that I'm speaking of. So again, this is why I'm saying specify your timing because I rarely use the default wait for function these days. You you know, the, the antiquated email uh, follow-up that says, send an email, wait for two days, send another email, wait for three days, send another email there. Listen, there are times where that is valid, but for me, again, I'm different level. There's levels to this. I'm always I'm more than likely using wait until. For linear progression. Right. And and what linear what what doing the wait until does is it allows them to select their speed, select the pace in which they want to go through uh, my pathway that I've built for them. Right. So if you don't have 
if 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 you don't have a speedometer in in your funnel, then you, you're 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 just at the basics, right? You you haven't yet leveled up. But but mine is like you can move really fast or you can go really slow. There's you know, there there's a spectrum of speed. And that comes from the wait until and then. If if I want to allow them to dynamically go, which means just jump to the end or just jump to a certain position, I'm going to use goals. And practically every platform has goals now. There used to be a day and time where it was only Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft was the only platform with goals. Now everybody has caught up. OK, and and goals are, are what allows you to skip the waiting line and just jump to a particular place in the automation. And you need to use you need to learn to use both. What's unacceptable is that you don't use either. That's unacceptable. If you're building right now and you're just have wait for one day, wait for a two day and, and you're calling yourself, you know, a, a marketing automation expert. And dare you aspire to become an automation service provider, you you can't do that. Wait for. No. Nah. That's that's for the remedial. OK, we're on another level. Right. So so it, one good example is I, I often use wait until for lead magnet delivery. You know, I'll deliver the lead magnet, wait until they click the link. Once they click the link, boom, go. Go give them the follow up or go to the next step. Right. Not send them an email Wait two days, send them follow up number two, wait three days, send them follow up number three. Right. Not knocking you if that's what you're doing. I'm just saying I'm not better than you, but I'm just building better than you. Can we say that? (laughs) Right. All right. I'll use goals for event based reminders. Right. So if somebody uh, registers for an event and, and, and it's one day before the event, I don't want to send them the one week reminder. I want to send them the I want them to jump to the one day reminder. Right. So you have to specify your timing because timing is everything and it allows you to put the right messaging in front of them when they're most prone to take that action. OK. All right. So number three. Number three, this is fun, everybody. I could go on and on for days with this, but uh, number three is keep try. I have try here because you're not going to be, this is not an absolute, you know, this commandment is not absolute, but try to keep your start trigger singular. Okay. And I say try because there are times that just require multiple triggers for uh, start triggers. That is uh, start triggers for the same automation, but you need to do so sparingly. Because off because they often allow contacts in an automation more times than you initially expected. And and here's what I see. Right. People are looking at this automation and they're like, oh, if they do this, this or this, they need to get this right. They need to go through this automation. And it's like you, you the second you start adding multiple start triggers, you lose track. They're, think of it as doors to your house. Right. And the more doors you have, the more you have to make sure it's locked, it's not open. It's just more entry points and people lose track of these. You should you should be able to use multiple start triggers. That's why practically every platform has them. Why I'm saying to keep them singular is because I have seen it go wrong more times than it's went right. People will call in or ask me, why do they keep going through this automation? They were only supposed to go through it once. Look, it says if they submitted the form only once. And then they also has but had a tag or visited the website or this is all that start triggers. And many people just think that, OK, if they do any of these things, start not understanding the repeat path. We talked about this, right? One of the main considerations for for an automation service provider is to understand if somebody do, is to ask the question how to build better automations is to ask the questions. What if they do this again? But when you have multiple start triggers, it's not just what if they do this one start trigger again? It's what if they do any of these start triggers again? Or what if they do all of the start triggers once? Look at all the considerations we just introduced to one automation by having multiple start triggers. 
So that's why I say do so sparingly. Because it's not about this is what I need you all to get. It's not about building in the moment. It's about recalling what you built in that moment later. It all makes sense right now when you're building it. Is it going to make sense next week? Right. Is 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 does your understanding of your own work have an expiration date? I, I know what I'm doing, but. You know, ask me within the next three days uh, and I'll know it. But next week I forgot it. You have to build in a way that you can quickly and easily recall what you've done because you're going to have to in order to optimize it. Remember, your first time is your worst time. So the first the first version of this thing is going to need to be revisited. And if you've got multiple star triggers, um, you, your timing is not uh, dynamic. And then you've got all of this negative logic. Just those three, those three, you will never reach the finish line ever. It's always breaking. You're always on the phone with support. And and then dare dare you talk about the platforms broken. D- dare you get mad at the support. Right. That's that's for the people that don't understand what they're doing and they're trying to figure it out. But you who call yourself a marketing automation specialist and aspiring automation service provider, how dare you place blame on the platform when you're breaking these commandments and you should know better. You should know better. No shame. No shame. Just up your game. OK, that's it. And, and these are just a few commandments, everybody. Just a few to help you navigate this automated terrain a bit easier. There are many others, many others that include, you know, the the approach to breaking your automations up by function. uh, When to use tags, custom fields and lists interchangeably, correctly, accurately, um, as well as the types of automations that you should put in place for practically every client. You know, I call these my my foundational framework um, and, and that could be an entire episode in itself. Um, in, in fact, I created an entire module around the rest of these tips, as well as all of these foundational uh, automations, uh, all of the automations in my foundational framework, uh, in-depth teaching on all of the automation building commandments, all of the ABCs. Right. Um, in my new curriculum, in my, <laughs> my new curriculum that I'm launching for becoming an automation service provider. And, and what we've done is we've created a free workshop for you to enroll in to get started and learn more in depth on how to become the most sought after automated marketing professional in your industry. I mean, can you see just with these three? We just talked about three. Building upon these three, getting exposed to the rest of the commandments, as well as understanding all of the pre-work, you know, uh, all of that process extraction, mapping, messaging and all of that stuff prior to all of this working in concert. Do you see just a little bit, just a little bit? You should be able to see by now, especially if you've been listening to the podcast. You can see how doing this, embodying this, this, this approach will by default just make you the most sought after marketing automation professional because your results are going to speak for themselves. And then people are going to be speaking on behalf of your results, telling their friends. People love to brag about automation that's working in their business. You just want to be the one that set it up. Okay, so this workshop is going to consist of four live trainings done by by yours truly, as well as opportunities to engage with other like minded marketers like yourself um, and ask me any question that you may have along the way where it's it's we're we're, we're going to have a good time together. We're, we've got worksheets, challenges, hot seats and more. And, and, and guess what? I also deem the right to add whatever I would desire <laughs> to increase the value of the collective group. Right. So I'll be dynamic with you. Got it all mapped out and prepared. But if we see some say, hey, look, how, let's do this. You know, maybe I re- review one of your landing pages, do a landing page breakdown. Maybe we do share your automation. We break your automations down. I reserve the right to move freely, everybody. OK, 
but it's a unique opportunity to, to catapult your, your automated marketing career and, and take a safe shortcut to the top. None, none of these dangerous shortcuts, right? None of these dark alley <laughs> shortcuts. We want a well-lit path, well-lit shortcut to the top. Because my belief is that uh, you don't have time. You don't have time to waste trying to figure it out on your own and on your clients dime, right? They're paying you for expertise, not to figure it out. And speaking of those who are paying you, if if you're a CEO and, and you've made it this far, you like, whoo, that was a lot. Um, but you're still here and you have a marketer that's responsible for implementing your automation. You need to make sure you send them to this free workshop as well. I mentioned it earlier. Some of you have no business ever touching this area of your business. <laughs> OK, you have no business touching this part of your business. But you need someone on your team who can master it. You really do. OK, if you send them to the workshop. I'll handle the rest. That's that's my my promise to you. OK. So the link to get access again is free, you know, at no cost. Um, that link is automationbridge.com forward slash workshop. And as always, who else comes to mind that needs to hear this? Maybe it's someone you're looking to hire. Maybe it's someone you've already hired. Uh, maybe it's you looking to be hired. Maybe it's a friend that, you know, that's trying to get into the marketing tech startup space. And this is what they want to do for a startup, as I've done for many startups. Who's that person? Uh, make sure you share this with them. Uh, the the <laughs> the more the merrier on understanding how to approach this space the right way. It's it's my singular focus and commitment. And, and here here we're dedicated. We're dedicated to training those digital marketing professionals to become automation service providers. So uh, this workshop, again, it is it's it's free. Um, there is a vetting process. So it's not like it's just like, hey, everybody bring you your friend, your cousin yeah, and your mom. <laughs> it's not one of those parties now. Um, this is targeted. I, this is focused. You have to be uh, have a passion and desire to really take 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 your career to the next level where we're only accepting those type of individuals who are going to answer the call. Because, like I said, this stuff is not easy. This was just a, 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 a wedding of the whistle, you know, just the surface uh, what we covered in this episode. And those of you who have listened to the other episodes, you know how much more there is to it. So it's time to to be able to start to get exposure to the full framework. Stop trying to. Hey, listen, listen, wait a minute. I just I just I just heard it. I just felt it. <laughs> OK, stop trying to piece it together, even with my podcast. Stop trying. OK, he said this in podcast number one and this in five and, and then and this is in twenty five. Stop trying to piece it together. Listen, just come to the well. Come get your own bucket. <laughs> okay, get your own portion of water. All right. You can learn the framework from myself. Don't have to piece it piece it together. Don't have to wonder if it's right or wrong, but more so you can get the help and accountability that you need. OK, we all need it. We all need it. You're never too great. You're never that expert that you don't need help from the collective group. As it is right now, there are so many different businesses and, 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 and automation service providers in the community from e-commerce to coaching to uh, specialized classes, you know, to real estate. I mean, across the board, you need that exposure because, again, you don't need to be learning on your client's dime. All right. So that link again for the free workshop is automationbridge.com forward slash workshop. Um, we're going to be starting very soon. So you, you don't want to uh, waste any time. Make sure you get in, um, fill out the questions so that we can give you a quick, you know, look over and, 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 and give you access or not. Um, and we can get started. So all the show notes to this podcast, as well as all of the other ones are accessible at automationbridge.com dot com forward slash podcast you can subscribe there to listen to all other episodes at your leisure 
All right. So so until next time, hopefully I see you in the workshop or online. Automate responsibly, my friends. <laughs>